What is going on gamers? Avatrix here and today we're on Iron Throne. This is a new Netmarble game that just released two days ago. Uh, now this is a game that's very similar to Lords Mobile. So if you understand the concepts behind constructions, research, monster hunting, guilds, etc. This is very similar to that. But this, this game does offer a lot of different things um, that I'm really, really enjoying. So instead of going into the game and explaining to you research, constructions, all of that stuff that you will probably already know if you play a game like Lords Mobile, um, we're going to go ahead and focus on three things. And that's going to be my top three things that I'm really enjoying that's different from any other game that I've played so far that this game has included. And we're just going to hop right into that. My number one thing is this right here. Now, this is the battle screen, right? This is where you ready up with your troops and all of that. It tells you right here what they have and what you can send, right? So it breaks it down into a multiple of 10. So for instance, I can send four to four um, and then send it to battle. And by the way, unlike Lord's Mobile, Range is actually strong against infantry, and infantry is strong against cavalry, and cavalry is strong against range, so it's not the same dynamic as Lord's Mobile, so if that confuses you, uh, you probably just have to get used to it a little bit, but essentially once you understand the counter, it, it works the same way, but seeing as they have 3-3-2, three, three, and then they have Siege, one big important thing that's different in this game is that Siege isn't necessarily weak to the other three troops. They're neutral. So that makes them not as useless and they're actually quite good. Now, but let's go ahead and get into this fight, right? I won't take Siege with me. Uh, Alright, so let's go ahead and load this up and I'm going to show you exactly why this is my, uh, my most favorite part right now. Now, you see here that these are the formations that we can send. The thing is, you can actually move them however you want. Like, you can put some cavalry in the front, you can put some range in the front, as uh, so long as you have some infantry, etc. All of these spots, you can do whatever you want with them. So, instead of having a set phalanx or a set wedge, you can do whatever you want, okay? Now, what I want to do is... I want to put my my ranged up front and we'll go something like this right that's a pretty good line so when you look at when you look at them you can you can see their formation and then you can set your formation however it is that you want you can you can put two two and then everybody else in the back line the possibilities are endless okay so that takes the strategy to win a battle to a whole other level now once you do start the battle which you will go ahead and do so right now here we go now there, these are like scenes that you normally don't get because this is kind of like the story mode etc but here we go now you can go ahead and skip this but i'm gonna go ahead and let it play now i'm using an emulator so uh it might not run as i would want it but here we go here's the battle now if you if i was using a phone i could spin it around however i wanted it Look at that. Now, the other thing here is, is that you can use spells as the battle is going on. So I can use this uh, this heavy rain or higher rain, whatever you want to call it, comets, whatever. You go ahead and post it right here, and there you have it. It's going to come raining down on them. It's going to do massive damage. And you can summon monsters once you get them researched. And I'm going to go ahead and just put them right over here. There you go. So you summon him and he's going to go ahead and start attacking their troops. So with your timing, with your formations, with the spell usage and where you use them can completely turn a battle around. So it's not necessarily just your troops and your phalanx versus their troops and their phalanx. It takes a whole different life of it uh, of their own once you uh, start understanding how these battles work and all of that and it's it's completely different from every other game that I've played so far now the other thing that I really really enjoy is actually in the world map and I'm gonna show you uh, what exactly I mean by the way we did start uh, a little small uh, guild which you see right here it is SCT screen time we are in kingdom I believe 11 yeah 11 so if you want to join 
make sure that you uh, get to Kingdom 11 and join SCT. Um, now the other thing, like I was mentioning, one of the things that I really, really enjoy is the world map. And because, let's take a look at my resources, right? So I'm kind of low on stone, so I need to go out and gather some stone. Not bad. Right here on the bottom right corner, there is a search function. So you go to search, and you can actually search for monsters, strongholds, and strongholds is like darkness. You can go look for different type of resources that you can look for. And essentially what I want is stone, right? So I have level 4 quarries uh, searchable right now. And it'll tell me exactly which one is the closest one to me. You hit go. It takes you directly there. And you can see gatherable 300,000. So I'm going to go ahead and send my troops out there to gather my stone. But let's say that I'm looking for a monster, a specific monster, right? So I'm going to go over here and put it to level, I don't know, let's put it, let's put it just 16, right? So level 16 black unicorn, you go here and there it is. That's the closest one to me. So no matter what you're searching for, let's say we put the level a little higher, 25. There's no level 25s in the map right now. Let's see, level 20, there's the level 20. So whatever you're looking for, you can go ahead and just use the search function and it's going to tell you exactly where's the closest one to you. And it just saves you so much time from just going like this and looking for that one tile that you're looking for or for that one specific level monster. And it just, it saves you a lot of time, saves you a lot of headaches. And overall, it's just a nice little addition that I really, really enjoy in a game like this. Now, the third and last thing that I really, really enjoy that's very different from other games is the castle. And what I mean by that is the alliance castle. So once you start an alliance, aka guild, you can start building an alliance castle. Now, the way that you build it is actually quite interesting. The guild leader, I went ahead and put it down right here, right next to our hive. And you have to actually build it up to 100%. And the way that you do that is you need to reinforce it with troops, all of your members. So right now we have 19 members that have sent troops to this Alliance castle. And they're all helping to build this castle right now. And the progress, it's I believe it was uh, like a 15% and we just started it yesterday. And we have about four days remaining. Now, of course, the more people that join with the higher tier troops, the faster it'll build. And once we actually get this started, right? Let me go ahead and show you exactly all that it will come with it. So once you have your Alliance Castle built, you'll be able to get this egg. And essentially, it's going to be an egg that you will hatch into the Alliance Dragon or the Alliance Wyvern. And this Alliance Wyvern can have a lot of different skills. So you can see here, all of these skills, it's something that you can use. So troops of enemy castles in the affected area are bound by invisible shackle, de decreasing their offensive march speed, etc. It's, I mean, there's a lot of different ones that you can, uh, that you can get. And once you get all of this, you start going into Alliance Research, which everybody can chip into. And it's just, as a guild, you feel like you're doing a lot of things together, not just sending helps or things along those lines. Of course, you do still get your, uh, your, your guild gifts and things of that nature. So that is really awesome. But the Alliance Castle and the way that the Alliance works, as far as the research, the territories, they even have Alliance shops, which you actually get these points from helping the Alliance. And with those points, you can actually go ahead and start uh, buying some things for yourself. So there's a lot of incentives that go into the Alliance and helping your Alliance, etc. Because it also pro helps you progress. And uh, we're, we're going to go ahead and see uh, if we can get this uh, built within the next couple of days. Make sure that as people get higher level troops, we're replacing the lower ones that we sent earlier and get this built. But... So far, I'm really enjoying the game. If you want to join the game, I'm going to go ahead and leave a link that you can download the game directly in the description and in the comment section. But yeah, appreciate you guys for watching. And I'm going to be covering a lot of this game going forward. If you have any questions about the game, make sure that you leave it in the comment section. That way I can cover it in a video. But yeah, appreciate you guys for watching. And until later, bye.